Praise the Lord and welcome to the good news of a life without fear. I'm Bob Fowler and I pray that you are already having a blessed and a favor-filled day. Ah, I am excited about today's program. We're going to continue where we left off yesterday. And the title and the topic is, It's Who You Know. Ah, uh, can you look back in your life and see where God has used people to advance his plan, his uh, dream, his vision for your life? He uses people, even though we don't seek the, the approval of people, even though we don't seek out using people to advance God's plan in our life. Nonetheless, God does use people. But we're not talking about who you know concerning people. We're talking about your relationship with God. You know, I've said it for years, and it bears repeating as often as possible. The greatest thing, in my opinion, and prayerfully you agree, that we have received as a result of what Christ has accomplished on the cross when he declared it is finished and in you and I being recipients and enjoying the benefits and the blessings of what he fulfilled on the cross. The greatest thing, in my opinion, is that we now have a living, breathing, existing relationship with God through that sacrifice of his son and the payment in full for our sins and now the payment in full for us to enjoy. And I want to stress that you should enjoy, not endure your relationship with God, not just press and barely get by in your, no, re, enjoy the blessing and the benefit of the relationship, the growing, the ever never ending but ever evolving relationship that you now presently have. You know how many people, unfortunately, they have been blessed with salvation. They have been blessed with the opportunity to grow in the relationship that God has afforded them. But unfortunately, we don't take advantage of that nearly enough. And I want to encourage you today, let it be a deeper resolve within you that I'm going to lean in as I never have before to get to know God. Think of that. You know, how many, how many of us have spent so much effort and energy in getting to know a human being, a person here on the planet? But yet, we have been given and afforded the greatest opportunity to grow in our relationship with God, our understanding of God, of learning about God, who He is, who He desires to be in our life. And unfortunately and sadly, we don't take any more advantage of that opportunity than we do. I want to encourage you today, lean in even deeper. Open your heart even wider to the possibilities and the potential of getting to know God, the creator of the universe, as never before. It's who you know, part two. Let's get into this today. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verses 11 and verse 12, to which also I was appointed a preacher. Now, this is, this is the writer's heart sharing with you personal insight into his life and his experience and relationship with God, to which also I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, now what reason? Well, because of his calling and because of his the responsibility and opportunity that he had received from God, to be a promoter, a preacher, a teacher, an apostle of the gospel, the good news that it is finished, the good news that we're no longer under a covenant of law, but now we're under a covenant of God's grace, that freely we can come into that throne of grace and we can talk to God, communicate with God, grow in God, learn of God, experience God, but also we can obtain and find help and mercy 
in our time of need. And as I like to point out, you and I, when we come to God and we're in need and we need mercy and we need to find that grace, it's generally when we're in trouble. Now, how many people think that they've got to get cleaned up They've got to get all perfect and pretty and, and learn how to walk with God, talk with God, and have their life in a, in a perfect place before they can even think of approaching God's throne. No, God, because of what Jesus did on the cross, he invites you to come to him when you are tore up from the floor up and you look like a mess and you don't know what you're going to do and the last person you think would be receptive of you would be God. But God invite you know, Jesus was called a friend of sinners. That's a perfect picture of grace. God doesn't shy away from you when you're in trouble, when you're hurting, when you're when you when you're when when you fail, when you've sinned, when you've missed the mark. No, he invites you to come boldly with confidence, shoulders squared, coming before him as if you didn't do anything. You see, it's in the understanding of God's grace, his love, his mercy, the provision of Christ on the cross for us. It's when we begin to understand that and grow in that relationship and knowing God through that relationship. And and I'll be honest with you, you really cannot know God under the law. You can only know God in intimacy and in the depth that he desires in relationship under grace. To understand that through Christ and you're receiving what Christ did on the cross, it is understanding that as far as God is concerned, you have met every righteous requirement of the law. You say, wait a minute, I look at my life, I have struggles, challenges, difficulties, shortcomings, areas that I'm growing in, areas of weakness. But remember what the Lord spoke to Paul. He said, Paul, he said, even in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. And so I want to encourage you today, before we go any further, to understand that you're under a better covenant, a covenant of grace. And that grace is not a thing. That grace, that grace is a person. It can be found, understood, and discovered in Jesus Christ and what he did. Aren't you glad that you were born and you have the opportunity to grow in your relationship with God and know God under grace? Aren't you glad that your relationship with God is not based on a list of do's and don'ts and your, your ability to somehow navigate your life and your relationship with God by keeping that list of do's and don'ts? You know, it's interesting. Uh, I grew up here in South Florida. And in South Florida, there is a large population of Jewish people, of Hebrews. And every Friday at sunset, they, uh, those, those that are the strictest of Jews, uh, they begin to adhere to a certain list of do's and don'ts uh, in, because their relationship with God is not one of grace. It's one that's under law. I have watched Jewish people, not only here, but also in Israel. Do you really, you know, isn't it something that we as Christians, unfortunately, some segments of Christians that believe that their relationship with God is based upon them keeping the law, they think that they can keep the law to the extent that God will accept them. Well, let's just kick it a little bit higher. Let's, let's, let, let's elevate our thinking to a little bit. There is not a Christian, a Protestant believer, that attempts to have and and experience a relationship with God under the law as well as they may think that they may be able to perform and keep a list of do's and don'ts. There is not one that is able to keep it as well as a Jewish person. But do you know that even the Jewish people who believe that their relationship with God is one of them keeping conditions, rules, and laws. Do you know that as well as they are able to do that, they still fall short 
I've always thought it interesting that if a Jewish person cannot meet up to the complete thoroughness of the standard of the law, why would a person who is not a Jewish person, who is a Christian, who certainly does not adhere to every letter of the law, Remember, if you break the law in one area, you've broken the law in every area. Why would a Christian think that they would be able to measure up to every letter of the law and have that relationship with God and know God in that regard? Why would they think that they would be more accepted or able to keep the law better than a Jewish person? You see, we can't keep the law. The law was never given in order for us to keep it. The law was given to show us that we cannot keep it. You can't perform every letter of the law. You can't keep every every holy, righteous requirement that God demanded under the old covenant. You can't do it. So here comes Jesus. And Jesus fulfilled every single dictate and demand and letter of the law. And now, watch this, as we have entered into a relationship with God through what Christ has done, it is, it is the same and as if you, because of you receiving Jesus, it is the same as if you have met every righteous requirement under the law by receiving Jesus. So your relationship with God and your understanding of the relationship and the opportunity that God gives each of us to walk in and to get to know God and walk in a living, breathing relationship with God, it has to be through the understanding that my relationship with God is not based on a list of do's and don'ts. It is based solely upon what Christ has done and fulfilled on the cross. Now let's continue on. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him until that day. I know. Now, what is Paul saying? You have to go back to what the Greek word is for that word. No, it's gnosko. It is the word that, as I, as I shared yesterday, the Jewish people, this word is the sexual, it's the idiom for sexual intercourse, for producing. So what is Paul for, for producing offspring? So what is, what is the word declaring here? For I know. I know through my experience, I know through not only my experience, but through what, watch this, what I have seen produced and the fruit in my life. I can look back and there's a track track record of things that God has produced in my life. Now, let me ask you a question. The greatest source of encouragement is through what God has done in your life. Now, as a child of God, as a believer, as an individual who's placed your trust and your faith in what Christ has done and fulfilled on the cross, can you look back and see that God has done incredible things in your life? Can you look back and see that the seed of faith that has been implanted in your spirit and in your soul has grown and produced and developed something miraculous in your life? Now, I want you to think for a moment. What has God done in your life? What has God produced in your life? What, is, what, what are some of the characteristics, the godly characteristics, the desire to have a relationship with God? All of those things are things that should strengthen and encourage you in your own walk and development and growth with God through what Christ has done. You know, so often we look outwardly for sources of encouragement. But the word of the Lord says they overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. They love not their life even unto death. Your greatest 
source of encouragement is your own personal knowing and relationship with God. Now we can look at others so often we can see God and what he has done in their lives. But when was the last time you have really stopped and taken inventory of what God has done and the things that he has developed within your own life? Has he been faithful? You know, if you listen to me any length of time, I declare often he is faithful. How can I say that? I say it from a place not from your experience, not from your own witness, not from your own testimony, but I say it from my own. How many times can I look back and say that God has been faithful to Bob Fowler? He's come through. He has shown himself faithful, shown himself strong, shown himself oftentimes not because of my faithfulness, but because of his own. You see, it is in your own personal witness. It is, it is in looking at you. Maybe, you. maybe you have to go back and look at before you met Christ. And then you see how your life and the tra- trajectory of your life and the track of your life has so drastically changed over time because of what he has done. And so the word here is saying, that I know in whom I believed. How do I know? I know from a place of personal experience. I know from the root word gnosko that simply declares there is a growing, there has been a producing of fruit in my own life. For I know in whom I believed and I Now, as looking at what God has already done in my life, I have become persuaded. What does the word persuaded mean? It means you can't talk me out of it. You can't change my mind. You can't you, you, you can't fool me, trick me, deceive me. You, you, you can't bring in a different philosophy, a different perspective that is in error. No, I've made my mind up that God is a faithful God. I've made my mind up that he watches over his word to perform it. I made my mind up that, that greater is he that is within me than he that is within the world. I've made my mind up that God desires to have a living, breathing, existing relationship with me while I am evil even on the planet. And I have also been persuaded that he wants to produce what? What does he want to produce? He wants to produce the kingdom in my life. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And and when you say that word earth, I want to encourage you to do something. You see, you and I are made of the earth. (laughs) <laughs> don't look at the planet, don't look at the globe, realize thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, in earth, in this earth. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, earthen vessels, vessels that are made of clay, scooped up from the dirt. Listen, God wants to produce the kingdom inside of you. And the truth is, he's already put the kingdom within you. The challenge, as we've said so often, is taking what God has put within our spirit, implanted within our spirit, what has transpired in our spirit, and bringing it into our soulish realm, and then manifesting it in this life. You know, the Bible declares you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That healing is within your spirit. But what do you have to do? You have to believe it. Where are you believing it? You're believing it in your soulish realm, your your mind, your will, and your emotions. So you open up the gate in the soulish realm and you begin to speak that. I believe that it's God's will for me to be healed. I believe that it's God's will for me to be blessed. I believe it's God's will for me to be prospered. I believe it's God's will for not just the kingdom to be alive in my spirit, but I believe it's God's will for the kingdom to be manifested and demonstrated demonstrated in my life. I not only believe it's good enough for me and God desires for me to experience the kingdom, but I believe God wants me to impart the the kingdom, to share the kingdom, to speak from the kingdom, and to not only see my life benefited from the kingdom, 
but he also wants to use my life and yours to impart that kingdom to other people. Trust me, you'll never give the kingdom away to the point that you've depleted it in your life. As you give, guess what? It's going to grow, increase, and expand even in your life. Ah, my friend, we're going to continue this and hopefully finish it up tomorrow, but I want to tell you something. The person that dwells within you, if you are a believer, you could spend the rest of your days attempting, trying, leaning in to get to know him, and still the next day there would be more for you to grow in and discover about God. You know his mercies are renewed every day. Do you know you'll never deplete the joy of the Lord that is your strength? That you'll never deplete the peace of God that he has put within you? It is an ever learning, growing, and expanding kingdom that right when you think you got something figured out, God will show you a different perspective. Ah, to be in a relationship with God, no matter where you're at and no matter what the challenge may be. Can I tell you something? It's not over until God says it's over. And what may appear to be a tombstone in your life is simply a stepping stone in God. Let me tell you something. Your best days are in front of you. How can I say that and why do I say that? Simply put, God continues to grow and you will continue to discover who he is, and the blessing and the benefit of having a relationship with him for the rest of your days. So no matter where you're at, no matter what the challenge may be, and I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come into agreement with that one that may be struggling in their physical being, in their body, maybe in their finances, in their home, that we didn't even see or know was there. I pray for that one that maybe has a son or a daughter, has a grandchild on their heart, maybe concerning salvation, and they're standing in agreement, believing for you to bring them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, the name that is above every other name, that at that name every knee must bow and every tongue must confess. I speak that name over the need and I come into agreement with your people in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray and we agree, amen. Well, I pray that the program has been a blessing to you and I pray that if you didn't see yesterday's program that you go back and you watch it, but even more than that, if it has been a blessing and a benefit to you, would you take a moment and share it with your friends on your social media platforms? Listen, if they bless you, they certainly will be a blessing to others. You know, so often, some, sometimes we say, what can I do for God? Well, I just gave you a quick little easy assignment. You can take and share a good word, an encouraging word, an uplifting word, and an edifying word to someone you may know is needing that source of encouragement. I want to encourage you also to go to our YouTube channel at Faith is a Victory Fellowship YouTube and subscribe. There you're going to find all of our programs that you there also can share with people that you know. Lastly, I want to encourage you immediately after this program, would you prayerfully consider going into the description section and there you're going to find several safe and secure ways in which you can with confidence and integrity sow a financial seed into the ministry of Faith is the Victory Fellowship. Listen, we have projects and things that we would like to do And the only thing that's restricting us and holding us back is not faith, it's finances. And so I want to encourage you, consider not only giving, but prayerfully consider becoming a monthly partner with us here at Faith is a Victory Fellowship. Well, until tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern, right back here at Faith is the Victory Fellowship Facebook, I want you to know that I love you, God loves you, and as always, my friend, never, ever forget He is faithful.